Hi guys, here I am again. Uh, look, I'm just sitting up in bed here, drying my hair, you know. Like, I mean, it's autumn over here now and it's a bit cold, you know, you wash your hair at night. You've really got to get into bed, right? And, um, because otherwise you get a bit chilled sitting out there, you know. I mean, I could put the fire on, but oh, I might do that later. But it's just easy for me to hop into bed here, make this video. <laughs> like this for you guys you know got my japanese shamas on so you know oh they're chinese actually chinese print chinese print yeah got them online very inexpensive but nice and cozy you know anyway look what i want to tell you about you know how i told you all on twitter like that i was going out for lunch with my um dear friend jenny Right, we went out for lunch, and uh, we had a we had a really nice time, and um, like you know, I don't just put this down a bit. That's better. That's better. Yeah. Anyway, had a really nice time, and uh, like I ordered eggs Benedict, and she had fish and chips, and uh, oh, it's lovely, you know. And we had um, two lots of coffee because you know, you've got to have at least a mug of coffee and then another cup after that i mean otherwise you know you you just don't get coffeeed out i mean you need that you need that injection of coffee so that you'll talk more you know the, the more you yap onto each other the better the day you're going to have you know so if you go up there you know feeling a bit flat and you you don't get stuck into the coffee pretty much straight away you know the whole lunch is wasted really isn't it you know well anyway i couldn't eat all my eggs benedict and, uh, oh, yeah, I could only eat about half, you know. It's a huge plate, you know, with all this, you know, smoked salmon on it and spinach leaves and everything. And um, anyway, underneath the egg and the, you know, the polonaise sauce. And uh, anyway, I thought, I looked around and I said, gee, Jenny, I'm going to take this home with me. And, of course, they used to do doggy bags, but they don't do that anymore, so. So... I said, <laughs> what do I have got in my purse is a mask. Left over from the COVID days. And I've got that thing, you know, that you sit inside the mask, you know, the filter sort of thing. So I've got them out and I'm looking around the restaurant to see if anyone's in there. And I really surreptitiously just stuck what was left of the eggs, Benny, on top of the mask this little filter and then tied the top <laughs> tied it up into the purse eh? well it's lovely i i had that the next morning i mean when i got home i put it in the fridge i had that the next morning for breakfast i tell you what it tasted even better the second day than it did on the day that we bought it yeah yeah so yeah you know clearly as long as you get it home and you put it straight into the refrigerator you should be right. You should be right, I think. But, you know, you've got to be really careful of salmon, eh? You know, you've got to be careful of salmon because <laughs> you wouldn't want to give yourself to main poison, you know. But anyway, I got away with it. Everything was fine. And, you know, because I know the rules, you know, and the regulations. I know what you've got to do to keep yourself safe. Yeah. Anyway, so, Jenny and I were sitting there talking, right? And she said, oh, well, you know, what have you been up to? You know, haven't seen you for ages. And I said, Oh, well, you know, actually, I've been doing a little bit of astral travelling. She said, yeah? yeah? She said, well, tell me about that. I said, well, no, you know, I don't really like talking about that. It's a bit, a bit private. But listen, I'll tell you what. I want to tell you about what happened last night. I said, it was the weirdest bloody thing. And I said, look, I was, it was about half past three or three o'clock, I think it was in the morning, you know. And I'm fast asleep. I don't normally sleep through the night. I usually, I usually, I'm a bit of an insomniac, you know. But anyway, I don't normally sleep too well. But this particular time, I was out like a bloody light. When all of a sudden there's this, what's like this? Knock, knock, knock. Like that, on my bedroom window, right? Which is 
opposite. So you'll just turn it round. Look. See? That window there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Knock, knock, knock on the bedroom window. Right. Oh, what's going on here, see? So I called out, oh, who's there? And this voice answered, answered. he said, um, it's my voice. He said, oh, I'm your divine counterpart. Uh, your divine masculine. You know, you manifested me. I said, what the fuck is he talking about? He said, what do you mean? I manifested you. No, I didn't. I had nothing to do with me. And he said, well, manifested you and I said well, I, I don't know and I don't care what you did but I said you can piss off out of here and go back to wherever you came from he said oh well he said, I thought you'd let me in and we could have wild abandoned sex I said what sex with wild abandoned no, I haven't had that since I was 30 you know, get, get out of here you fool you know I said, go home. I said, and I looked out, you know, he's got this bloody old, looks looked like this horse that he got from the knackery, right, tied up to the tree. And I said, take the bloody nag that you've got tied up to the tree out there and go back down the mountain the way you came. And he said, that's, that's not a nag. He said, that's a 1952 Harley Davidson, fully restored. I said, what? Because I couldn't see. He said, gee, he said, your eyes must be bad. I said, they are. Yeah, they are. They're no bloody good at all. And I'm looking out there. I'm trying to get to see him because he's in the dark. And I put my bedroom light on. like, and I'm looking out into the dark, but he could see me because I'm in the light. You see, I'm in the light. Anyway, and he said, oh, well, he tips his hat like that. And that was when I realised he was wearing a cowboy hat. He says, oh, well. Much obliged to you, ma'am. I'll be on my way. And then he starts lurching off and I could hear him stumbling. I thought, he's pissed. He's been get, he's been throwing back a few bourbons or something, getting a bit of Dutch courage, you know, to come up here. And I said, hey, 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 mate, 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 mate. I said, hang on, hang on, hang on a bloody minute. I said, listen, mate, you know, you're a... You're a bit pissed. I said, you can't drive back down the mountain like that. On that motorbike, of course, you'll get killed. I said, people fall off the mountain all the time, you know, whole bus loads. I said, no, 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 no. Look, I said, you'll have to stay here the night. And he said, oh, well, all right then. Thank you very much. He said, uh, so uh, I said, oh, well, all right. Well, look, I said, I've only got a two-bedroom house. My son's got the other bedroom, so... But I said, I do have a six foot wide bed, a king size bed. I said, so long as you sleep over your own side and mind your own bloody business, we'll get on just fine, okay? Okay? I said, anyway, so I went out and opened the front door and I let him in. Anyway, so now you get straight to bed and I don't want to hear a peep out of you. Anyway, so he gets into bed and he pulls a bloody blanket right up over his head. I didn't really get a good look at him. I should have had a good look, but I just didn't, didn't want to go there. I didn't really want to look at him. And I thought, the less attention you give to these guys, you know, the, the better, really. Anyway, so he's completely under the blankets, the sheets up right over, over his head, see, anyway. Next morning, you know, I could see this big lump in the bed, and you thought, well, he's still there. He hasn't gone home yet, you know. So anyway, I got out of bed, because I had to meet Jenny for lunch, see. So I go out, and I have my shower, and I go down there, and Jenny said to me, after I finished telling her this story, she said, well, did you get any clues about this guy? I said, well, well he had an American accent. I said, uh, he's clearly a cowboy. I think, you know, like one of those guys from Arizona, you know, where they grow those prickly cacti? She said, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, he could have been from anywhere, really, couldn't he? I said, yeah, 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 that's had the feel, you know, had the feel. But anyway, I said, well, let's not dwell on it. We won't worry about this too much and um i said look do you think it really actually happened that i maybe i dreamt it 
She said, oh, well, you'll know when you get home, won't you? He'll either be there or he'll be gone. And surely if he's gone, he'll leave you a little note. Thank you, madam, for your hospitality. Because, you know, being a gentleman, American gentleman, you know, he, he would do that, wouldn't he? And I said, well, yeah, he would. It's, we'd expect him to do that. And uh, she said, well, let me know. And I said, look, i tell you what. I said, if that was a dream... Was so real. I said, how do you know that we're actually sitting here having lunch? How do you know, Jenny? I said. She said, well, we don't really, do we? I said, no. I said, just because that Renee Descartes said, I think, therefore I am, trying to be logical and all that, you know. I mean, it's no guarantee, is it? Uh, none of us really know if we're here. And we don't know whether we dreamt something or it really actually happened. And the more you think about that, Very bloody weird. But anyway, I've freaked myself out now. Oh, I'm totally freaked out. Anyway, I'm going to go and uh, oh, put my head down, see if I can get a little bit of shut eye. I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, by the way, Jenny said she was going to send me a picture to put up on Twitter. She hasn't said it yet. I mean, just because she's a good mate doesn't mean to say she can't honour her obligations. But, you know, best mates are like that, aren't they? You know, they think, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I said I'd send her a picture, but, you know, <laughs> doesn't matter if I don't. You know, I'll get around to it when I feel like it. And, uh, yeah, so when it turns up, I mean, she got me and my cup of coffee. You know how they've got these hearts on this coffee, you know? And she said... I, I just sort of picked up, you know, this satchel of sugar and, and I'd open it and psh, dropped it down on one half of the heart. She said, oh, you ruined it. I wanted to get a picture of that. And I said, well, you still can. She said, but it's, 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 you put sugar on it. And I said, well, that's only on my half of the heart. And, you know, clearly I need sweetening up. I mean, you know, his half of the heart, I mean, he does, you know, he doesn't need sweetening up. He's probably a very sweet, nice guy. But my half, well, clearly I'm a bit of a bitch at times, you know. That must be the case because I always have sugar in my coffee and I always pour it on my half of the heart. You see? You see? Anyway, look, I'm going to go now, as I said. Oh, my eyes are stinging. Oh, you know how it is when you get in the shower and you put it on full blast and you just stick your head underneath it and you open your eyes and oh my god you get out you know and you oh you think what did, I, what did I do that for but anyway the thing is it's very good to wash your eyes out I've been told this I've been told this it's particularly good for myopics like people like myself that have got myopia you know mm, very good to wash your eyes out now, that's just a, a tightly held family secret that I'll impart before I leave here now um, yeah, handed down generations, you know. Always wash your eyes out if you've got myopia. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why, but, you know, it's worth a try. <laughs> so see you all later. Bye.